بلدي اول راديو عربي امريكي ويعنى بقضايا العرب في المهجر برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا ومباشر عبر دبليو ان زي كي ريديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا Welcome to Radio Baladi the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 698 from 8 till 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan our call in number 248-557-3300 and now stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues Uh, this is Ray Hanania. It is Radio Bellity Friday, November 1st, 2022. And I am Ray Hanania, the guest host uh, this morning. How did the midterm November 8 elections turn out for Arab American and Muslim Americans running for office? And, uh, and uh, we're going to look and analyze that, the overall election results too, nationwide, see what happened to Republicans and Democrats. Um, my guests are going to be our pollster and consultant, Dennis Denno who added a new hat to his resume just uh, Tuesday, trustee to the University of Michigan. That, that, which one is it? Uh, come on, uh, Michigan State University. Michi, what, what do I know? They're all the same to me. Michi, hang on here. Let's get that right. Michigan State University. Yeah, that's statewide. That's amazing, uh, Dennis. That, congratulations. And uh, I think, I, I'm not sure, but you may be the only the third Arab American that has think, ever won statewide, right? I think I'm the fourth. I could count, I, I counted three before me. Well, if one of those four, three before you doesn't complain, we're going to just count you as the first. And then we'll just start adding them when they start adding in. Um, Uh, Ali Yunus, uh, a reporter with Arab News, freelancer who works with me, he's going to join us in a few minutes. Um, he's just getting ready, so we'll have him on. So between the three of us, we're going to look at all the different elections that took place. Um, you can watch this. Uh, we're streaming live on the U.S. Arab Radio Network at facebook.com uh, slash U.S. Arab Radio. And uh, I hope you check out all my columns and links at hanania.com. Dennis, uh, Michigan State University trustee, congratulations. That's big. Yeah, thank Tell you. Uh, technically, I'm a trustee elect. I think I get sworn in January 1st, but no, it's, it is huge. It's exciting. It's humbling. I'm really honored. Um, it's, um, I mean, there's a lot of work to do, you know, and it's a statewide position, like you said. Um, so it'll be exciting. It'll be an exciting eight year term. Wow. But eight, wait, it's a, how long is the term? <laughs> These education positions are eight year terms. Wow. That's, I don't know of any office that's longer. Is there uh, one US, that, uh, yeah, you, U.S. Senate six years. I can't think of anything that's comes. I can't think of another eight year term. Yeah. Other than dictator of Syria or maybe dictator of uh, Iran, they may yeah. come out to eight year terms. Okay. How's that? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Saddam Hussein That's, was there for a while. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, hey, you could be a dictator, but we know you. We know you're a good guy. Ali, I'm just congratulating. Ali Yunus joined us. Ali, I was just congratulating Dennis Denno uh, for winning at statewide office at Michigan State University. Um, and I think he's the third or fourth. We're not sure, but it could be the fourth only Arab American to win a statewide office in Michigan. It's a big deal. What do you think, well, Ellie? Congratulations, Denno. Thank you very yeah, much. Maybe, maybe Ellie, we should do a story on Dennis now and focus on because that is a big deal, statewide office, you know, yeah. and uh, your parents are immigrants from Iraq, you had mentioned, right? Yeah, uh, Arab, Arab Americans, Arab, they, they, they left Iraq. My, my dad left in uh, 47, my mom left in um, 62. And, um, Yeah, it's great. They're really proud of me. I love my parents. I'm proud of them. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them standing on their shoulders. So it's great. Wow, your That's parents phenomenal. Left, your dad left Iraq during the monarchy. Then. That's right. That's right. And my dad turned 100 years old uh, this year, and he's still doing great. <laughs> That's great. That's wow, that's phenomenal. That's yeah, the he's... nice thing about a lot of Arabs live to right old ages, which is good to hear that. Yeah, man, he's still, uh, he beat me in, uh, he beat me in backgammon last week, so he's still mentally sharp. 
<laughs> yeah, that has to do with the uh, Arabian food, the olive oil, the extra virgin olive oil, um, and that uh, Arab music, the Debka and Aladel Ona music that we have that just keeps us bright and jumping on our feet until even in the hundreds, the 90s and the hundreds. Ali, you're going to get up there too. You look like you're going to, you look like well, you're, well, actually, Ali looks like he's in his 40s and you too, look, you too, Dennis. I, I have a theory. You know, when it comes to food, because you know Mediterranean food is is very popular now in the United States, but yeah. in the Arab, they go back and forth. You know, over the years, I reporting trips, but I see the Arab world is more going toward junk food revolution, because yeah. you know America is very attractive. You see, yeah, the only you, you see a lot the only of way you're gonna... uh, you see a lot of McDonald's, a lot of in KFC, uh, Domino's Pizza. Subways, all this processed, greasy food is making huge inroads into the Arab culture. That, you know, and, displacing and our the arteries and into our arteries too. The only way you're going to get McDonald's and all those fast food restaurants out of a country is when uh, they invade Ukraine and then we boycott them and then we shut them all down because Russia now is going to be a much healthier country with all without all that crappy fast food that we sent over there so that's 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 correct you guys are really let's, hungry let's start yeah me too let's start out with the elections uh, let's start out with Dennis uh, aside from your election again which uh you know and for those that are just tuning in uh Dennis Denno pollster and consultant uh he uh, won uh, election as trustee to the Michigan State University. It's a statewide office, one of maybe four, he may be the fourth uh, Arab American to actually do that statewide, which is huge. Because I don't know of too many Arabs that have won any Arabs actually in the country, when you think about it, other than uh, some senators. I think we had five US senators. Mm -hmm. So you're not a US senator, but you never know, Dennis, you could be. But running statewide is a big deal. But tell us, in your mind, in the, these other races in Michigan and maybe across the country, any of them stand out for Arabs and Muslims? You know, we, um, excuse me, in the Michigan House of Representatives here, we, uh, the Democrats took control of the House for the first time since um, 2010. And our majority floor leader is uh, his, he's a he's Yemeni American, he's, you know, and um, he's Muslim American. Going to be the first time a Muslim American has had a position that high up uh, in the Michigan legislature, um, and obviously he's Arab American too, which is pretty exciting. Um, I mean, here in Michigan, Democrats just want everything up and down the ticket. Um, it was a real bloodbath for, for the for the Republicans. And we um, also passed Proposal 3, which enshrined abortion rights and health care for women in the Michigan Constitution. And I want to give a shout out to my wife, Raina, who uh, was working on that uh, campaign. That's phenomenal. And uh, Ali, what about you? And any Now, you, I did a story about, and I'll tell you what, it's hard to track Arab and Muslim candidates in the United States, in part because our media uh, outside of this station, which is, you know, the voice of uh, Arab Americans, I feel, in uh, Michigan, um, you know, it's hard to get information on our community because we have a terrible media, Arab media and Muslim media in the U.S. And I know, Ali, you discovered one that I didn't even know about. Tell us about that one race, I think, in Atlanta. Yeah, there was yeah, an I, Arab American that ran there. Yeah, I've written the story on uh, Palestinian American. Uh, she's 29 year old. Her name is Ruwa uh, uh, Roman. Um, she just won in at, in uh, Georgia state legislature. She will be the first Palestinian American to win an office right. to be in a representatives in Georgia General Assembly, and uh, and she ran a good progressive campaign against a MAGA Republican who actually used, she told me, he used uh, Islamophobic uh, tactics. You know, he really? called her, sent the flyers to the communities that she's affiliated okay. with his terrorist groups. But, you know, surprisingly, she told me last night that the communities in her district supported her, protected her, even the conservative group in, in her district supported her, and she's wearing a hijab. 
and she won, and she won by almost 60% of the vote there. So she'll be so that the first, the first Palestinian American in the House of Representatives in Georgia, and the first Muslim American in the House of Representatives of Georgia. And Georgia, I think, outside Michigan, is fielding four Muslim Americans in the General Assembly, two state senators and two House, two representatives in Georgia State Assembly. And that's big for Georgia. Yeah, it is. And, you know, again, it's like uh, the, the problem is that they don't think in terms of uh, promoting and publicizing themselves outside because these are big motivators to Arab and Muslim Americans around, uh, Americans around the country. Um, and that racism backfires. I remember when I first, uh, when I left the Chicago Sun-Times, I covered City Hall 18 years and I left in 1992. I ran for office to see what it was like to run. Yeah, so I ran for state rep. And at the time, Clem Balanoff and his mother, Miriam Balanoff, were the only two Arabs. They were Syrian Jews. I still consider them Arabs. They're Arabs. They're from Syria. They're Jewish. And we don't discriminate between Christian Muslims and Jews. They were the first two legislators in Illinois to hold office. And I thought, OK, I don't want to be a legislator, but I need to figure out what it's like, you know, if I'm going to be a consultant for politicians. And the first thing my opponent did was this is remember 1992, we had just come out of the Iraq war. He, there were flyers that were being mailed to every voter that said Ray Hanania isn't just a Palestinian, he's an Iraqi. Don't vote for him. Don't vote for the Saddam Hussein supporter. It was <laughs> all over the district. And no offense, Dennis, I was proud to be Iraqi, but I'm going, I'm not Iraqi. It, it isn't enough just to call me Palestinian, but. At that time, that racism really had an impact, but it's good to hear that today it doesn't. Dennis, you think racism against Arabs and Muslims is still a campaign factor? And have, you think we'll ever get beyond that where people look just at who we are? Did you feel it in your uh, election at all? No, not at all. Um, yeah, you know, my race, I mean, it's statewide and it's so bottom of the ballot. It was all about top of the ticket and turnout. Um, you know, I think Michigan's a little different. I think we've kind of, as far as Arab American and Muslim American, I think we've kind of, kind of gone beyond that in the sense of there's going to be a huge backlash if, if you if you do that. Um, I mean, look, racism is still a huge issue in this country. Um, I mean, ask African Americans, right? Ask a lot of ask Hispanic Americans, right? Um, so I do think race still plays a factor in, in American politics, but <clears throat> maybe a, maybe a little less than 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, that it would be a factor. Allie, you think we'll ever get past uh, racism in, in elections? Uh, it's a it's a weapon, R regardless of who you are. If you're yeah. black, there'll be some racism. If you're Hispanic, if you're Jewish, there'll be some anti-Semitism. If you're Arab and I think, Muslim. I, I think it'll, it'll still be there, but I would like to uh, um, support what Dennis said, or add to what he said. It, it, it's a state by state. You know, In Michigan, it's very difficult do that and so but it's a state by state district by district it depends on the, on the race and the office the the minority uh, person is trying to uh, win uh, the the woman who won uh, in Georgia Roman told me last night that she thinks because the Islamophobic and the racist taxes did not work she thinks that Islamophobia at least in her case is going out of style because nobody believed what the what the opponent have said or or, or uh, alleged that she is uh, that affiliated with terrorism, of course, a false charge and slanderous in of itself. And she thinks because now in a lot of states in America, especially perhaps in the, in the conservative South, that there is maybe anti-trans, anti-LGBT uh, 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 individuals. So there's a lot of... Uh, of, of victims or a, a lot of targets have been displacing Muslims and Arabs uh, in, in nowadays, you know, and 20 years maybe or more after September 11 attacks. So, it, I, so like I said, I, I think it'll still be there, but it depends on a case by case uh, situation, not necessarily across the board. Like in 1992, what you said, then you know they called you Iraqi. Now, if, if you if you're an Arab American, they will call you. Okay, who do we hate now? Iranian. Hate... They'll start calling you Iranian. Oh, they call you Americans Russian. Americans don't know the difference. <laughs> yeah, I would call you a Russian sympathizer or something, you know. So, yeah, it Dennis, 
Yeah. Dennis, you had a point you wanted to make too. Yeah, I think something that was kind of point I want to make with my race where people didn't really know the candidates for state for these education positions are so bottom of the ballot. And I can't prove this theory, but I think that if, you know, my name is very American sounding. My name is very Deno. People thought it's Italian, right? right? I mean, if I had a quote unquote right. Arab last name, if my first name was something like no offense to anyone named Muhammad, but if my first name was Muhammad, I think that would have sunk me, you know? Yeah. Um, and then when you're running for something like state rep, which is a, a, a smaller district where you can literally knock every door, hopefully you're knocking every door, and you're in the community, you've built roots in the community, people people get to know you. And if your name is Muhammad, they can they can realize, well, yeah, you're not a terrorist, you're a really good guy, you got kids in our schools, um, you know, you help clean up the park every year, stuff like that. So I think we've gotten as a community beyond beyond that, which is good. Yeah, I so I, I agree with you. If the less your name, that still, if your name comes across too strong as Muslim or Arab, um, and that I guess applies in every race or religion, there's always going to be a racial factor. But we want to get ours down from 60% to the norm, which is about 20%. I think people vote based on race and religion. Go ahead, Ali. Yeah, I think, uh, but I agree with Dennis, who said with the name Muhammad. And if you are in a in a narrower district, you know, state, state uh, district, people know you and, and the people that I've talked to who won uh, elections in, uh, for example, in Iowa, I talked to Sammy, Sammy Sheets, uh, whose mother is from Syria, an immigrant from Syria. And uh, he's been active and community organizer, the community know him. He also won by 60% of the vote. And he worked for Bernie Sanders campaign, worked at the State Department. He speaks uh, Arabic. So Arabs are not shy of their identity. You know, uh, when they run for office, uh, women who wore a hijab. We saw the case of Nabila Sayed in, in Chicago suburbs. She's 23 years old and she won um, a, a seat at the Illinois General Assembly. 23 and she's yeah, wearing I a think hijab. She's yeah, that was a big deal. We're going to take a quick break. I, I think if my name, you know, if I had a real Arab name like Jesus, I think that would be positive, right? I could get a positive vote off of that. All right, yeah. we're going to take a break. I'm, I'm Ray Hanania. You're listening to uh, uh, Radio Bellity on WNZK AM 690. It's November 11th. Happy Veterans Day to everybody out there. We appreciate all your service. Um, and uh, I'm speaking with two great friends and political analysts and pollsters, Dennis Denno, who just uh, was elected to the Michigan State University as a trustee statewide in Michigan. It's a big deal. And Ali Yunus, a writer with Arab News newspaper with me, one of my colleagues. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about more of these races, Sheets, and also uh, Abdul Nasser Rashid, uh, who unseated a Democrat, a uh, Democrat. Uh, a seven term Democrat in the Democratic primary, and then went on to win the state legislative seat in uh, Illinois, making him the third Arab American, if you, you need to count the Balanoffs, Miriam Balanoff and Clem Balanoff, who were Syrian Jews who won those seats in the legislature in the past. I'm Ray Hannity. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk with our guest, Dennis Denno, and Ali Yunus. We'll be right back right after these messages. Our noses can sniff out all kinds of things, good things and bad things. Your nose knows if those sniffles are just a cold, allergies, or COVID-19. So if you want to be sure, swab and test your nose for answers. It's good to know. Find testing information and resources at michigan.gov slash COVID test. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Ziad brand quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? 
Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Nachi Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Nachi Abood now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design. New location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Naji Abood, 734-744-9796. Are your hands feeling numb? Do you feel pain opening up a jar, turning a key? Are you noticing that your elbow and your shoulder are becoming stiff? Or were you recently injured in your arm? Hello, I'm Dr. Albajit Katranji. And at the Katranji Hand Center, which just recently opened down the street from the Somerset Mall, we can provide you with the latest in hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder care. Visit us at www.katranjihandcenter.com to learn the latest techniques that we have to offer you. And I look forward to taking care of you. Visit us in Troy at 1565 West Big Beaver Road, Building F. Or call Katranji Hand Center for an appointment at 248-869-4263. That's 248-869-4263. And we're back here at Radio Bellity. I'm Rahan Nia. We can uh, take some calls if you want at 248-557-3300. Of course, we have one of our super fans, Jerry Haba. I'm going to have to make him a panelist on here because Jerry loves to listen to the radio. Jerry, welcome to the radio show, and thank you for listening to us. Thank you, Mr. Rehanania, for taking my call, and I appreciate your words and words. If they are not diamond, <laughs> they are gold and silver, and I appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Welcome, Rehanania. buddy. Good morning uh, to your uh, guest, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dennis Jeff, Deno, uh, statewide. Dennis Deno, one statewide, Jerry. You, Mr. Dennis, we are proud of you that you won this yeah. election at uh, Michigan State. We appreciate you. And God bless you to serve the community. And we are proud of you because you represent all of us from the Middle East. Thank you for your uh, victory. And good morning to our uh, Al Mukhadram, Al Mukhadram, Mr. Ali Ali Yunus, uh, the journalist, the politician. Uh, good morning and happy Veteran Day. And Ray, happy Thank Veteran you. Day to you because you are a veteran. Thank you. Yes, I am. God bless you. Yes, I, I am. A lot question. of Arabs, a lot of Arab Americans. Thank. Thank you. My question is about the election, and you know how some people they call it the blue wave victory in the state of Michigan. And, you know, for the first time, gentlemen, uh, since the 1980, 84, the first time Democrats control the state, uh, uh, state Senate in Lansing, I do believe, and with them to renew uh, the victory on the three position uh, as a governor, as a uh, attorney general, as a secretary of state, yes, of course, is a victory. Gentlemen, my question is, and I would appreciate it because it bothered me too much. As an American uh, from Middle East, I'm proud. I see our people during the election and before the election especially in the great uh, Dearborn area, which consider the Mecca of Arab outside the Middle East. We came from conservative uh, uh, society. We are against the abortion, an example. But I see our leader in the community uh, push uh, for a proposal three, which was uh, encourage uh, the abortion to be legal in Michigan. Uh, gentlemen, don't you think our people, uh, they play, uh, I, I don't try to say a, a hypocrite, but they say something at the place of God, if it is mosque or church, and they are against killing uh, innocent uh, babies. But in the meantime, they are uh, supporting official who they run for the office and they uh, support abortion and kill those uh, babies. Yes, exclude right. a woman's life in danger, I understand. 
when a baby is driving, yep. I understand. But I would love to hear an answer from you, gentlemen. Thank you very much okay. for taking my call. Thank you, Mr. Ray Hanani. Thanks. Again. Thanks, Jerry. We appreciate that call. I, I'd say real quick, and then I'll ask Dennis and our guest, Ali, uh, what they think. But I would say that sometimes uh, people in politics focus on the party and the politics rather than the issues. And they use the issues, and they see the issues as a way to build up their party. So a lot of Democrats, I know, were using abortion. Um, and in the Arab community, as you say, they're very conservative, I believe, um, on some issues. But they're embraced by, they've rallied around the Democratic Party because of Trump and the far right, you know, targeting Muslims and Arabs. Uh, what do you think, Dennis, on that issue? Well, I actually know a lot about that issue. I, I volunteered for it almost every single day. My wife, like I said, was one of the regional organizers for yes for proposal three you know I, I i personally i think it's a little offensive when they talk about killing babies it's not killing abortion isn't killing babies and i think on the flip side of it you know two things one i mean the this ban would uh, the ban on abortion was so extreme that if a 14 year old got raped by her uncle by her dad right. um she would have to carry she would have to go through with that with that pregnancy if a woman was um, if her life was in danger uh, due to an abortion, she she would have to go through with it and potentially die because of it. We had county prosecutors talk about prosecuting doctors and nurses for um, you know for abortion procedures, which to me is completely outrageous. Um, and look, I mean, I know a lot of Arab Americans, I know a lot of Muslim Americans who are not anti-abortion, uh, who in their faith and their beliefs um, are, are don't don't have the problem with it. Well, of course, we're men talking about a woman's, you know, right to choose. So, but given that, I mean, I, I think part of the problem was the abortion issue was either one end or the other. There was no middle ground. Uh, I'm against abortion as a form of birth control. I think it's wrong, but I, I do agree that abortion should be allowed during the first trimester in the case of incest and rape or if the life of the mother is in jeopardy. Um, I think that's reasonable, but we didn't hear a reasonable debate. From the left, we heard all abortion. Uh, from the right, we heard no abortion. There were very few voices in the middle. What do you think, Ali? So I think for in, in, in Islam, and I, I don't speak for Islam, but I, as far as I know, uh, abortion is, is illegal to start with as, as a foundational uh, principle there uh, abortion is banned however i think for most muslim and arab societies overseas they take consider consider uh, uh cases like incest or jeopardizing the woman's uh, uh life however in in the u.s the issue of abortion is complicated for the arab community because what uh our friend jerry said coming from conservative societies and you see you know, Democratic politicians here, Arab Americans, you know, supported the Democratic position, you know, across the board, and the Republican Arab Americans supporting the Republican position across the board. I think there is a, a dilemma right there, because Arab Americans coming from conservative societies, and they are themselves socially conservative, it's very hard to be accepted by the Republicans um, as conservatives, you know, because the Republicans base their conservatism on values that are different than the conservative conservatism of the Arab and Muslim communities, uh, especially on the, so yeah. and, and the social level. Um, because from a political point of view, Republicans might not, Arabs might not find Republicans to their liking from a political point of view. So you like me socially, but I am not welcome politically because the Republicans are not on the right and perhaps far right of the Arab issues, whereas under the, under the Democratic, all... and under the Democratic Are... side, you know the Democrats welcome the Arab position on abortion, but they're not necessarily also the two and left side of these of the Arab and Muslim communities. So it's it's a well, it's sort of like conflicting I... dilemma there for Muslim yeah. and Arab voters. Yeah, I was going to say that also. Um... You know, the issue of gay rights in the LGBTQ community, that's another issue in the Arab and Muslim community. And even as a Christian, you know, they teach me that, you know, it's it's wrong. However, there is a middle ground where you can respect somebody who's gay 
You can respect somebody who's transgender. You can respect the LGBT community. I don't think it's the right lifestyle, but I'm not going to use that feeling to judge those people who want to do it. There is a middle ground in all this. Dennis, is there a middle ground in abortion or is it, you know, I mean, I don't I don't want to mischaracterize your views, but do you, is it abortion across the board or is there limits to abortion? You know, I think I think this is a great question. I think this election cycle showed that uh, women in America don't appreciate men telling them what to do with their bodies. And I'm just going to leave That's it at true. that. OK. All right. And then uh, we got to take another break at 730 um, or 830 at Detroit time, 730 for me. I'm in Chicago. Um, we have two great guests, Dennis Denno, who just won a seat on the uh, Michigan State University Board as a trustee and uh, a longtime consultant and pollster. And we also have Ali Yunus, a writer and reporter, my colleague at Arab News. Uh, we're looking at the Arabs and Muslims who won election and some of the issues that they faced. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back right after these messages. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Imad Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Imad Nakash. See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bottom serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all CDC guidelines and is open every day, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. And welcome back to Radio Bellity. I'm Ray Hanania here with two great guests, Dennis Denno um, and Ali Yunus. Uh, Dennis, uh, how did that Proposition 3 turn out in uh, Michigan and, and in Dearborn, especially where there's a big, the greater Dearborn region, where there's a large Arab population, Middle East population? Yeah, so Proposal 3, which would, uh, oops, sorry, which would um, allow uh, abortion rights and, and medical health care rights for women in the Michigan Constitution. The yes side, which was the pro-choice side, won overwhelmingly in, in Dearborn uh, 59% to 41%, at least that's according to the Dearborn clerk. So our community was very supportive of abortion rights. Okay. And uh, I was just going to point out that, you know, I was looking at some of the uh, data uh, the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, um, and Jetpack Resource Center issued a report uh, recently that noted before the November 8th elections that there were 145 Muslim Americans who were competing in election contests on uh, Tuesday, the midterm elections in the U.S., and there were 29 American Muslims who, were, who uh, served as state legislators in 18 states. 29 American Muslims. Now, I'm going to guess most of those are probably not Arab, um, but it's interesting to see, you know, those numbers. And again, we don't have a, a great communications network. So sometimes it's hard 
to hear from these people in, in many of the other states. Um, so some of the other interesting, one of the big national ones, let's turn to the national elections, if you guys don't mind. Um, we had that race, uh, Fetterman versus uh, Mehmet Az, a Muslim from Turkey. And I don't know, I just, uh, you know, I know that it really, his religion, I don't think played a big role in this for Oz, but he failed to uh, win Pennsylvania's um, U.S. Senate race. He would have been the first Muslim senator, you know, in the United States. I think we've had five uh, Arab American senators, all Lebanese. Um, and I think one of them, John Sununu, was part um, Lebanese and Palestinian. Uh, but as Spencer Abraham, James Abnur, George Mitchell, and James Abarizic, uh, all Lebanese. Um, but he would have been the first Muslim, and uh, that never happened. I, how do you guys think people looked at the uh, Mehmet Oz uh, versus the Fetterman election in Pennsylvania? Was it important to them, or was it just totally politics? I think uh, when it comes to Mehmet Oz's uh, campaign in Pennsylvania, I think it's more the Republicans and Donald Trump factor. Uh, Mehmet Oz's issue of being a Muslim, I don't think it was a factor, you know, because, you know, Trump in choosing Mehmet Oz obviously did not choose him because he or he is not a Muslim. Uh, I tell you right. a, short, a short story about being Muslim. Uh, in 2012, I asked Newt Gingrich when he was running for president on a, on a campaign trail, because he's he was saying about it, you know the fair play of Americans of all backgrounds. I'm a historian and all that stuff. So I asked him if he would support a Muslim American running for president, and he immediately said yes. And he invoked the name of a Muslim American in Arizona, who is really anti-Muslim community and anti-Palestinian and <laughs> Israel. So, so that version of a Muslim, well, it, uh, that version of a Muslim it, for. Uh, that version of a Muslim is accepted in certain quarters of the ultra conservative Republicans, not necessarily just yeah. a, a mainstream Muslim, but you have to be of a yeah. certain qualification. To be accepted. I, I don't Muslim. think I don't think Oz was I don't think Oz was you know anti Muslim. You know, a lot of times that's characterized that if you're a Republican and Muslim, they say, well, you must be anti Muslim. I, I don't I don't agree with that. I think that's just the politics of it. And I also yeah. don't agree that I know that uh, people say that, you know, President Trump banned all Muslims. The truth is he didn't ban all Muslims. He only banned Muslims who were coming from six failed states like Syria or terrorist states like Iran from coming into the U.S. There were fi there are 50 countries that are Muslim and 44 of those countries, Muslims from 44 of those countries were allowed to come into the United States under Trump. And I'm not defending Trump. I'm just saying that sometimes the politics of Democrats and Republicans gets in the way of the facts and the issues sometimes. So we really don't get to talk about the issue. We only talk about, you know, the fear mongering that is pushed out there sometimes, I think. Dennis, what do you think uh, Go ahead, of that Oz uh, Fetterman race? You know, I didn't, I didn't follow it so uh, that closely. I was so I was so neck deep in Michigan politics. Um, you know, I think you, you think you I think you're both are right that Mohammed Oz, Oz wasn't seen as the Muslim candidate. He was seen as the Republican candidate or the Trump endorsed uh, Republican candidate. Um, I mean, Mohammed Oz made let's face it, Mohammed Oz made more mistakes along in the, on the campaign trail than Fetterman. Um, and, you know, Pennsylvania is, is, a, is a Democratic leaning state, which helped Fetterman. And, um, you know, in the end, it worked out for him. And don't forget, the, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Pennsylvania elected a Jewish American guy as their governor, which is great. Yeah. And in Minnesota, uh, there was a real, uh, at least in the uh, early polls, which just shows you can't trust the media. Uh, only one pollster I tr trust is Dennis Denno. But outside of that, I don't think you can trust him. They said... Uh, Keith Ellison was going to lose his office as attorney general. They said that he was going to trail uh, Republican Jim Schultz. He ended up winning by a narrow uh, uh, vote. Uh, I think he had a 20,000 vote lead out of 2.5 million votes cast um, as a Muslim uh, attorney general. But let, let's talk about that. The uh, What happened to the Republicans? Because um, statewide, not about Arab Americans, but nationally, what happened to the Republicans? 
um, because there was this big projection, you know, midterm elections, whoever's outside of, doesn't control the White House usually sweeps the House and wins the Senate. But that Republican surge that everybody predicted kind of fell flat. They're going to win the House, but we have to wait until uh, December, I think, for that uh, special election in Georgia to see if the Senate uh, is going to turn Republican by one vote. What do you guys think, Allie? Well, there, there are many factors for the Republican uh, not performing as the pundits or as expected as a red wave, as history have told us in, since 1978, that the, the president's party often loses. It happened with Obama, it happened with, with uh, Clinton, and it happened with other presidents uh, since the late 70s and 80s. Um, but, but I think Donald Trump uh, position in the election and he and the insurg uh, insurgents and the attack in the Capitol and his his back candidates always seem, sometimes seen as too extreme for the liking of many voters. So it was a mixed bag for them. Uh, a lot of them have won, but a lot of them have lost as well. Uh, and, you know, not necessarily, you know, uh, Mehmet Oz is a great example of that. And uh, Herschel Walker in Georgia is still, the jury's out on that. And, uh, and, me, and not many congressional uh, races have uh, performed to the liking of Donald Trump. And Ron DeSantis won victory in Florida. That speaks volumes, you know. Again, clear against victory. the Lebanese, against the half Lebanese American, by the way, yeah. Chris. Yeah, mm. Chris, Charlie Chris. Yeah. Yes. But Don, Ron DeSantis is is not necessarily a friendly term with Trump, and Trump has tweeted against him and, and so many times because he sees him as a, a future threat for the presidential run in 2024. So I think part of it is Trump involvement in the in the elections and uh, the performance of the Democratic Party. And we saw President Obama, uh, Pre President uh, Biden go to Pennsylvania to to campaign for John Fetterman. And that is is critical, you know, to flipping the state. So you know, it, it's a it's a mixed, you know, the performance of the Democratic Party, and also don't forget about the issues. In some cases, the issues was abortion. Some cases, of the issue is inflation. But all that played out in in, in a huge, you know, uh, country um, that many voters see see the issues different. Uh, dif depends on their locality and uh, depends on their state. Yeah, you know, uh, Chris, uh, Charlie Chris, he's Greek and Lebanese, Greek and Lebanese parents. Um, he lost to DeSantis, uh, but he got 40% of the vote, uh, 3.1 million votes out of, uh, in, in Florida, out of 7.75 million that, million that was cast. So he's pretty popular, but he still could beat DeSantis, who I agree with you, Allie. He is the guy that I think is a much more moderate voice than Donald Trump. And I think Trump says he's going to announce something big on Tuesday. And I think he's going to announce for president. And I think that's a mistake because I don't think Trump really, this election shows that Trump's influence is, he has some influence, but it's not as strong and not the uh, ironclad as many people thought. Dennis, what do you think of uh, Trump's role in the national election? No, I agree with Ali. I agree with you, Ray. You know, look, I mean, Donald Trump uh, won uh, the presidency in 2016, and he's been a disaster for the Republicans ever since. Um, you know, I want to give a shout out to President uh, Joe Biden. I mean, you know, he's accomplished a lot in, in his first two years. You know, Inflation Reduction Act, you know, the CHIPS Act. I mean, if you're in an industrial state, you need uh, computer chips to uh, build anything. And it's a huge problem. I mean, you drive around my community in Lansing and you got you got lots full of vehicles that can't be assembled because they don't have those microchips. And now we're getting now we're going to hopefully be getting those factories built here in Michigan. You know, he's protecting veterans. Um, you know, he's we're fixing our infrastructure. He's got a lot of funding set aside for infrastructure uh, uh, to, to be rebuilt in, in, in our country. This is a pretty big win for him. And, and let's face it. I mean, the Democratic Party message this year was abortion, which is health care. And Republican messaging was inflation, which is justifiable crime, which I mean, I mean, yeah, whatever. I, I mean, that obviously didn't sell. And, and their messaging was also Donald Trump and that just didn't sell. Yeah, I, listen, I don't agree so much with you about Biden. I'm more of a conservative Democrat here in Illinois. 
Uh, most of us were Republican and and but Illinois became Democratic. So you ha there was no re there is no re real Republican voice in Illinois. The Republicans, the only ones out there are so far right. They're extremists. They're nuts. You don't want to even identify with them. There's some good Republicans, um, but most conservative Democrats, um, they're still very critical of they voted for Trump, um, but they're very critical of Biden. And, you know, inflation is at its worst that it's ever been. Um, and our crime, at least in Illinois, is the worst it's ever been. Um, it's terrible. It's dangerous out there. So I think you're right. I think it depends on where you're at, what state you're in. In Michigan, I think Biden did very well. You know, he's a big calling card. In Illinois, I'm not quite sure that uh, people are driven by him. It's just that the Democrats control the state, state so strongly. It's hard to find a good alternative. Um, well, so Ali, any thoughts on all that? Well, the blue states, the Democratic states will remain Democratic states. It's the battle, really, over Pennsylvania, over Florida, all the states, or Wisconsin, all the states Michigan. that either North Carolina, Michigan, the states, you could, it could go either way. That's where the real battle is and, and, and depends on the real issues in those battleground states. I think where the Republicans could win the presidency or, or, or Congress or the Democrats win. Uh, and a, a, a clear case in, in point is Florida. Florida has total different issues than many other. Uh, it, uh, it, it has an uh, inflation issue, crime issue, and gun control issue. Texas is a Republican state, so gun control is big thing there uh, for the for the Democrats. And you see, and we saw uh, for the uh, uh, Abbott versus uh, uh, Beto O'Rourke. You know, Beto O'Rourke, you know, won the border regions of texas as a democratic you know el paso and and he was and he held a statewide office there as well but you see all all texas is is solid red with the exception of border mexico and most of the south is is republican uh, regardless of the issue see uh, because of the republican values and conservatism for the voters in the south but georgia is a flip state uh as a state that really uh, could be flipped uh, as it has in the past, two years ago. Um, so I, I think if you bring the people out to vote, and if the Democrats could, could you know, big cities in Atlanta, and big metropol metropolises uh, in the country would tend to be Democratic because of the higher education level. Uh, people are more employed. They have a higher income status. So they tend to uh, vote Democrat versus ruler, older population, uh, and you see that in the Midwest, in, in South Dakota, or or all this big big chunk of America that is basically empty of uh, major metropolises, you see the, where the Republicans perform well. I think this is the situation we have to. All right, we're, we got to take one last break, and maybe in the last segment, let's talk about uh, who we think. Is it is it going to really come down to Trump and Biden, or do you think they're going to be alternatives for Democrats or Republicans? And again, before we go on break, I just want to give a shout out to Abdul Nasser Rashid. Um, he took out a seven term incumbent Democrat who I think took the election for granted. Um, you know, Abdul Nasser Rashid did run for a county board seat against a crazy um, Republican uh, who won by only thirteen hundred votes. Um, and then he came back and Abdul Nasser Rashid, I think, was smart. He's really kind of a centrist. He, he, uh, co he uh, partnered in, with, in coalitions with Democrats across the board. He appealed to conservative Democrats and he won that race. And I, I think that uh, in Illinois, Abdul Nasser Rashid has a great future. I could see him becoming a congressman and even a U.S. senator, uh, much in the way Barack Obama uh, rose up from uh, the state uh, house when he was there. I'm Ray Hanania. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk with Dennis Denno and Ali Yunus about uh, what to expect in the presidential election, who the candidates are going to be. Is it going to be Biden and Trump, or are there alternatives, Joe Manchin, uh, DeSantis, or whoever? I'm Ray Hanania. We'll be right back right after these messages.
When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both of obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical, but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. Kashat's Mediterranean Market in Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, and seafood dinners. Plus, they offer big trays of your favorite food and so much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market in Shish Kebab is located at 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills and is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So stop in or call Kashat's today at 248-538-9552. That number again, 248-538-9552. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab hmm. will definitely leave you satisfied. And we're back here at WNZK AM 690 Radio. And uh, let me turn it over to Allie and Dennis. Uh, either one of you want to uh, start out on what do you think is going to happen in the presidential race as a result of this kind of mixed uh, turnout between Republicans and Democrats. It doesn't look like either really controlled anything. Um, what do you think, Dennis? You want to start? Well, I think uh, first off, right, no offense, I'm going to push back on that narrative. I think Democrats did very well <laughs> Tuesday. I mean, considering that That's Democrats, okay. and, yeah, Jimmy, considering that, that, that the party in power of the presidency normally has an epic fail. Um, I think Democrats did well. Um, you know, I don't know about who's going to run for president in two years. My crystal ball isn't that isn't that clear. I assume Donald Trump is going to announce he's going to run again. His ego is going to uh, won't allow him to not. I also think legally it helps him to if he's a presidential candidate, it's going to be harder to prosecute him. Um, I don't know. Does DeSantis go against him? He's got nothing to lose, right? Um, will they beat each other up so much that a third candidate who we're not, we're not even thinking of uh, sneaks in? I, I don't know. I don't know the Republican Party as well. As far away as your friend uh, Joe Biden, um, I think if, uh, if the polling, I think if, if Joe Biden's looking at the polling and he thinks he can keep the presidency, he's no question he's going to run again, um, believe it or not. Uh, if he doesn't run again, I think there's no question the Michigan governor, Gretchen Whitmer, is looking at it. No question the uh, governor of um, of California is looking at it. And here's what I keep saying about uh, Democratic uh, presidential candidates. Nobody in uh, 2008 thought a guy named Barack Hussein Obama, uh, Obama was going to become president. In 1992, no one thought Bill Clinton from Arkansas was going to become president. And you know what? In 1976, no one thought Jimmy Carter, a one-term governor from uh, Georgia and a peanut farmer, was going to become president. So the Democratic Party uh, side, who knows? Well, luck does play a lot in it because in Obama's case, he was running for Senate against a tough Republican named Jack Ryan. And had Jack Ryan stayed in the race, Obama would not have gone where he went. But Jack Ryan was embarrassed by a divorce. He withdrew, and the Republicans were stuck with this goofball. I can't even remember his name, and I don't even want to remember it, who represented the Republicans. And Obama just shot up from there. Ellie, what do you think is going to happen in the uh, uh, presidential well, race, given what we saw in the last uh, past week's midterm elections? Well, I think that what we saw is critical. And I, I, I agree with Dennis that the Democrats have done very well 
considering the history. Yeah. Uh, against, they've done very well. I think they could it could be considered a victory for not not, not being blown out in, in the U.S. Congress. Uh, but I think if Donald Trump you know, uh, nominated himself, uh, announced that he'll run for office, I think the, the Republican Party will be divided because uh, I for, for sure Ryan DeSantis is looking uh, for a nomination. And he is conservative. He has conservative uh, uh, credentials. Uh, and he could be another Donald Trump with a smile on his face, uh, would appeal to the Republican uh, Party, Republican Republicans, and would not be as offensive as Donald Trump, especially on issues of abortion, on issues of minorities, on issues of gun control. He supports all that. But also, we might see other comes to play, like uh, Mike Pompeo former congressman from California and former secretary of state and former CIA director. And uh, Pompeo yeah. is very conservative and he turned down. He is positioning himself as a Republican uh, who might be at play and who might see Ted Cruz. There's a lot of uh, hatred between Ted Cruz and the Donald Trump uh, from the 2016 uh, uh, election. And, and but remember Mitch McConnell, the majority or the, uh, the the Republican in the Senate, the leader, the Republicans in the Senate who might be uh, a majority leader if, if they win, doesn't, ha doesn't think highly of Donald Trump. And, and that is, is critical because Trump could, could be seen as a, a divider within the Republican Party. So that might push a lot of moderate or mainstream Republicans away from Donald Trump and leave Trump stuck with the far right elements of the Republican Party and constituency yeah. across the board. In the US. Republicans, honestly, Republicans didn't think Trump was a great candidate, but they found they had no choice. I don't know. There are a lot of Republicans that didn't want to uh, support him. Uh, you know, and I have to be honest, as a conservative Democrat, um, I'm concerned about Joe Biden. I think a Democrat could step up to the plate in a primary and take him out and defeat him. Um, I think he's vulnerable, but uh, we'll see. Dennis, you get the final word in our last minute, if you have any other comments. Yeah, I mean, I think you make a great point, Ray. Uh, everybody's vulnerable. And I think the other thing with American politics these days is things change so rapidly from week to week. Um, so, I mean, who knows? Who knows, who knows what the big issue is going to be uh, in, in a few weeks, in a few months? It'll be a, it'll be a fascinating ride. And Dennis, what's your website? And I'll ask Ali the same about his Twitter. Uh, what's your website, Dennis? Yeah, thank you. It's denoresearch.com. All right. And Ali, how do people follow you? You can follow me on Twitter. I'm uh, Ali, A-L-I underscore reports. And this is what I, you know, tweet, uh, comment on a variety of issues. All right. And, I, and I'm Ray Hanania. I want to thank our guests, Ali Yunus and Dennis Denno. My website is hananea.com. I want to thank US Arab Radio Network for uh, hosting us last week and this week to look at the elections. We'll see you again and uh, stay tuned, everybody. And again, thanks to our guests for helping us at least understand some parts of what happened this past Tuesday. I'm Ray Hanania. Have a great week, everybody. And happy Veterans Day again to all the veterans um, who served and uh, who sacrificed their lives and who are serving. You have a great week. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you, Ray. Thank you.